Yellowstone National Park, located in the United States, is one of the world's most popular tourist destinations. But beneath its beautiful landscape lies a dormant volcano that has the potential to cause widespread devastation if it were to erupt. In fact, the last time Yellowstone erupted was over 600,000 years ago, and it's estimated that the next eruption could be over 1,000 times more powerful than the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. In this video, we'll be exploring the latest data and analysis on the recent activity at Yellowstone and what it could mean for the future of the region and beyond. So buckle up and get ready to learn more about this incredible natural wonder and the science behind its current awakening. The Geological History of Yellowstone The Yellowstone region has a rich history that dates back billions of years to the Precambrian era. This period is characterized by the formation of our planet and the emergence of the first life forms. In northern Yellowstone and adjacent mountain ranges like Teton, Beartooth, Wind River and Gros Ventre, rocks dating back to the Precambrian period Paleozoic and Mesozoic eras can be found. During these periods, the region was submerged by oceans, covered with sand dunes and populated by tidal flats and plains. The Rocky Mountains, which are the backbone of the western United States, were formed during the mountain-building processes that occurred from the end of the Mesozoic era through the early Cenozoic. The Cenozoic era, which spans the past 66 million years, was a time of significant geological change in the Yellowstone region. Mountains were built, volcanoes erupted, faults formed, and glaciers advanced and retreated, all contributing to the region's unique landscape. The Abrasoka Range, located on the northern and eastern boundaries of the park, originated from volcanic activity about 50 million years ago, distinct from the present-day Yellowstone volcano. The western side of the range began to extend along an east-west axis 30 million years ago, and by 17 million years ago, the stretching process intensified, leading to the formation of the current basin and range topography, characterized by north-south mountain ranges and valleys. Around 16.5 million years ago, intense volcanic activity began near the present-day borders of Nevada, Oregon, and Idaho. A sequence of volcanic eruptions followed a path from southern Idaho to Yellowstone, covering a distance of 500 miles and resulting in the formation of over 100 calderas. The formation of these calderas can be attributed to the southwesterly movement of the North American plate over a shallow magma chamber. Around 2.1 million years ago, the Yellowstone area drew closer to a shallow magma chamber as a result of the North American plate's movement, ultimately culminating in the emergence of the current Yellowstone volcano. This volcanism remains active today, and the Yellowstone area is closely monitored by scientists to better understand its behavior and potential for future eruptions. Yellowstone, Magma and Hot Spots The Yellowstone area is an impressive natural wonder with a complex network of magma chambers and hot spots beneath its surface. The heat convection of the mantle causes plumes of magma to rise through the mantle, melting rocks in the crust, and creating partially molten and partially solid magma reservoirs. This process has led to the formation of hot spot volcanism over millions of years. Over the last 16.5 million years, the movement of the North American Plate has resulted in a trail of volcanic activity along Idaho's Snake River Plain, caused by the hotspots situated under the greater Yellowstone region moving along with it. Two magma chambers have formed near the surface of Yellowstone due to the heat from the mantle plume melting rocks in the crust. The heat from the shallow's magma chamber caused the crust above it to expand and rise, leading to increased earthquake activity along newly formed faults. These faults eventually extended down to the magma chamber, allowing magma to flow through the fissures. The release of pressure from the magma escaping the chamber caused volcanic gases to expand explosively, resulting in enormous volcanic eruptions that ejected significant amounts of volcanic ash and gas into the atmosphere. This process led to the formation of the initial Yellowstone's three calderas as the subterranean magma chamber depleted and the surface above it collapsed. The first of these massive volcanic eruptions occurred 2.1 million years ago and is one of the largest known volcanic eruptions. A second significant but smaller volcanic eruption occurred approximately 1.3 million years ago, and the most recent significant volcanic activity that formed the current Yellowstone caldera occurred 631,000 years ago. Since then, 80 smaller eruptions have occurred, 
with huge lava flows partially filling the caldera floor and surrounding terrain. The shallow magma body beneath the Yellowstone caldera has formed two resurgent domes, with the magma potentially being 3 to 8 miles beneath Sour Creek Dome and 8 to 12 miles beneath Mallard Lake Dome. Both domes inflate and subside as the volume of magma or hydrothermal fluids changes beneath them, leading to less pronounced uplift or subsistence in the entire caldera floor than that observed in the domes. Over the past century, overall inflation has caused the caldera floor to incline towards the south, leading to a drop in the southern shoreline of Yellowstone Lake and the formation of a sandy beach at Fishing Bridge. The Yellowstone supervolcano, while a breathtaking and awe-inspiring natural wonder, has the potential to be incredibly destructive. The next eruption, while not imminent, could have severe consequences, including widespread ashfall, debris flows, and a potential global impact on climate. Despite the risks, the area continues to attract millions of visitors each year. Drawn by the incredible geothermal features, stunning landscapes, and diverse wildlife that call the Greater Yellowstone Area home. One of the most intriguing features of the Yellowstone volcano is the remarkable ground deformation that scientists have observed in the caldera. Since the 1970s, they've been keeping a close eye on the movement of benchmarks in the ground, which has revealed a complex pattern of uplift and subsistence. In the mid-1980s, the entire caldera experienced an unprecedented uplift of over a meter, followed by a period of subsistence that lasted until 2005. Then, in 2005, the caldera began to experience extreme uplift once again, with the largest vertical movement recorded at the White Lake GPS station, where the ground rose by over 27 centimeters from 2004 to 2010. So what's causing all of this movement? According to scientific hypotheses, the ground deformation is likely a result of the migration of hydrothermal fluids or molten rock from the deep earth into the shallow crustal magma system situated about 10 kilometers below the Earth's surface. This movement can cause the ground to swell or sink, depending on the direction and speed of the fluids. While this activity is certainly fascinating, it's important to note that a caldera can undergo episodes of uplift and subsistence for thousands of years without erupting. Yellowstone Volcano Monitoring the effects and challenges. Scientists have been working tirelessly to predict when and how the next eruption will occur, but it remains a challenge. However, the good news is that research and monitoring efforts are in place to detect any changes that could indicate a potential eruption. According to current scientific knowledge, the next major eruption at Yellowstone is not likely to occur in the next few hundred years. But that doesn't mean we can let our guard down. The most likely volcanic activity would be small lava flows, similar to those observed after the last major eruption that occurred approximately 640,000 years ago. To keep a close eye on the Yellowstone Volcano's activity, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, or YVO, was established in 2001. This observatory is a partnership of scientists from various institutions, including the U.S. Geological Survey, National Park Service, and several universities and geological surveys. YVO scientists use a cutting-edge monitoring network consisting of 26 seismic stations, 16 GPS receivers, and 11 stream gauging stations to detect any changes in the volcano's seismic and hydrothermal activity, ground deformation, and other indicators of volcanic activity. They even gather information concerning the temperature, chemical composition, and concentration of gases at specific hydrothermal locations, as well as the chloride levels in significant rivers. The YVO website provides real-time and near-real-time monitoring of Yellowstone's volcanic and seismic activity, including monthly activity summaries, seismicity, water flow, and ground deformation. This monitoring system allows scientists to detect any changes that could indicate an increased risk of volcanic activity, providing valuable information for park rangers and public safety officials to prepare for potential volcanic hazards. Despite the lack of any major eruptions in recent history, there is no doubt that Yellowstone remains an active volcano. However, there are many factors that contribute to volcanic activity, and it is difficult to predict when or if an eruption will occur. What is clear is that the changes in ground deformation are closely correlated with increases in earthquake activity, which suggests that there may be a complex interplay between magma movement, fluid flow, and seismic activity. As scientists continue to study the Yellowstone volcano, they hope to gain a better understanding of these processes and how they might affect the future of this iconic natural wonder. 
Thank you for watching this video till the end. Remember to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, and share the video.